Hey everybody, my name is Suk. Welcome to Lead Guitar Workshop. Uh, today I want to talk about pentatonics. We know them, but we want to know them better, right? We, we, we understand as a musician, learning isn't always acquiring new knowledge, but learning how to use what you know better. So let's talk about the pentatonics, and let's talk about really what we can do with them and how people might use them. I want to talk about this as a musician, I want to understand basically as a musician what pentatonics do, when do we use them, and as a guitar player, when I need to know that pentatonic, how do I apply that to my instrument? Uh, first of all, we know that any pentatonic scale technically could be a five note scale, penta, right? It's, it's, it's a, it, it, we know the, the name of that idea. There are the traditional pentatonics we all talk about, and that's what I want to talk about today. There are five note scale that if we think of uh, the A minor C major pentatonic just for talking and thinking about it, it's the same for all of them. Remember in music, as a musician, in music there's only 12 notes and there's really only 12 of anything. There's only 12 major chords, 12 minor chords, 12 major pentatonics, 12 minor pentatonics, one for each note. Um, and we'll talk about a thing called relatives, where we get to double that knowledge uh, just by recognizing this. So if we just uh, go to the guitar for a second and we talk about pattern one, we all know this shape, right? Uh, if you think about it, we actually played 12 notes, right? There was two per string. So it's a, if it's a pentatonic scale, we have to first understand that that's over two octaves worth of the same scale. And you can just count it. One, two, three, four, five. That's the whole scale. One, two, three, four, five. That's another octave of it. And we hit uh, a third going into the third octave. So it's a full two octave swath plus uh, of a pentatonic scale. As a musician, I want to understand what the pentatonics do. They're five note scales. Well, like what five notes? First thing you'll notice um, in a pentatonic scale is there's not normally a half step. Right, so there's no one fret spacings in a pentatonic anywhere. They're either two spaces, uh, two frets, uh, two half steps or a whole step, uh, or a minor third, which is a whole step and a half step. And so if you, at any point, even when you cross strings, if you measured it, that would be true. The five notes of the pentatonic scale as a musician, uh, they spell a c two different chords. They're actually relatives of each other, every pentatonic scale. So this A minor we played right here on the fifth fret is also a C major. So if we thought about the notes, we have A, C, D, E, and G. If we look at those five tones, we could, we could take out three of them or use three of them to make an A minor triad, the A, C, and the E. That's an A minor arpeggio. So an A minor pentatonic has the three notes of the A minor triad plus two other tones. And in fact, the other tones would be the fourth, that's the D, not as usable, but interesting is the G, the fifth tone. One, two, three, four, five. That G is the minor seventh of the chord. So you could actually think of the minor pentatonic as a minor seven arpeggio, root, flat three, five, flat seven, uh, plus one extra tone. We also mentioned that uh, as a musician, we know that A minor is also C major. They're relatives. I like to think of relatives as the same house, except one you go in through the back door and one through the front door. Kind of looks different going in, but once you're inside, it's really the same information you're dealing with. So if we take the same notes, A, C, D, E, and G, but we start on the C note, C. C, D, E, G, A. That would be considered from C, like one, two, three, there's no fourth note, because there's no F, five, that's the G, and A is the sixth. From that, we can take a C major triad, C, E, and G. That would leave the D, which is like a second, and the A, which is a six. So if you ever came across a C major chord, a C6-9 chord, uh, just a C6 chord, C add twos, uh, the, the major pentatonic is, is a perfect fit for them. So when understanding this, uh, as a guitar player, one of the most fundamental things I teach people about pentatonics is rock and roll, baby. Uh, we all know this. Uh, and this should relate to this. Right? When you put your hand down in pattern one, I call it pattern one, some people call them by different numbers. The numbers are just as a reference. Don't, you don't need to assign any different numbering systems depending on how they're being used. They're just to help you remember where the notes are. 
Once you know the notes in your head, you know the fretboard, the patterns don't help you anymore. They're not, they don't, they're not as needed as much. Um, but this little device, the, I call the rock and roll rule, I know that sounds kind of silly, but it's the easiest way to remember that what two scales share a pentatonic, right? So in this pattern one, I've got an A under my first finger and the C under my pinky. So that means A minor, the first finger is minor, the pinky is major, and C major are relatives. How do I remember that? Well, if I think lower sounding note is the minor and the higher sounding is the major, low for the minor, high for the major, uh, it helps me remember this. So you can use this as like a little barometer setting or whatever to find any relationship that does this. So down here on the second fret, F sharp is minor, A is major. They're relative to each other. If I stop here on the seventh fret, I have a B, and a D, so B minor and D major, they're relatives. Uh, you'll see this stuff in songs all the time, sections of songs, verses, verses, choruses and stuff. They'll go between relative major, relative minor, constantly. Uh, Neil Young and stuff, this is songwriting 101 techniques. So you wanna recognize this stuff as a musician regardless uh, of your solos or anything. So pentatonics. We first want to find, uh, when you use the pentatonic scale, you have to think musically first and ask and answer your music questions. You have to know what chords you're playing over. So if someone says, hey, I'm playing over A minor, G, and F, you would have to know uh, initially which one of those is the main one. Which one do they kind of revolve around and seem to want to stop at when you're done with the song? In this case, most people would probably think the A minor. Even if I stayed on the F, it wants to go back to A minor. So if that's the case, then A minor is the chord, you just match the pentatonic scale to the chord. A minor chord, A minor pentatonic. Now you go to your instrument, take your rock and roll rule, and navigate that first pattern. Now as a guitar player, the other five patterns are always in the same relationship to this first one. Meaning above pattern one, you're always gonna go right into pattern two. Right behind it is pattern five, the last of the, of the patterns. They're always the same shapes, they're always in the same order, and it's like a conveyor belt. It just moves up and down depending on the key. You can watch one of my other videos I have uh, where we follow through the E minor, G major pentatonic for all the five patterns, and in this key, A minor and C, there's another video. Uh, you can check the links uh, for that. So when we play the uh, pentatonic scale, we want to be aware of, uh, of how it matches the chord, right? That's what we're just talking about, that it matches the chord of the soul. And that's playing globally. That's kind of thinking um, the whole scale will work for all the chords. Now, with your other patterns, they're all A minor. The patterns do not change the sound. They're the same five notes, and people very often mistake that idea. Um, Pattern one, and pattern two, three, four, and five, they're all the same five notes. So if you go from A to A in any one of those, the music world hears A minor. Only the guitar community notices you did it in pattern four, versus pattern one or pattern five, or open pattern four, right? It, it, and that's just an aesthetic choice and other decisions factor into that. But as a musician, that's all A minor. So as a guitar player, we, ha we have to let go of the idea that pattern one is minor and pattern two is major. That's only half true. They're both each other. Um, so if you had a song that was based on a major chord, um, and again, not even thinking keys, just the primary chord, so if you had a song uh, that went from a C chord, G, F, as long as it resolves to that C, then you're playing C major pentatonics. Now you notice in, you have to treat them differently. Even though they're the same notes, they are different. It's putting a different emphasis on a different syllable, if you catch my drift. So if I, you can even test this yourself with pattern one. Here's a great little way to do this uh, self-generating. If you want to hear the minor sound, go from a minor to a minor root and play the chord in between. 
So if we did four strums of an A minor chord and then went one and two and three and, and go back and forth by a bar. Let's try that. One, two, three, four. A minor, two, three, four. A, two, three, four. Right, and you'll hear the minor sound. Now, if we did it with the C chord, the C major, the relative, we would start on the pinky note C. One, two, three, four, five, one. And you'll hear it get much brighter and twangier. And you can use the C chord up here, an open chord, this bar chord. It doesn't matter. As long as it's a C chord, you can get back and forth. I'm going to use the one here on the uh, eighth fret. One, two, three, C major. C major pentatonic. Right, you might even recognize, you know, a little My Girl in there. Uh, the major pentatonics in the music world have a very happy country kind of vibe to it, but it also is the pretty Hendrix. All those nice kind of Stevie Ray to John Mayer kind of sounds, um, as well as the minor. So right now we have major and minor pentatonics at face value matching the main chord of a solo. Another layer is you could match them possibly, depending on situations, usually most of the time, <laughs> uh, on per chords. If you have long enough to play over the chords, you can move the pentatonic to match each chord individually. And you can do that at will. It doesn't like you have to, you don't have to commit all or none for that decision. So if you went back earlier and you were playing over A minor, and you went to G, you could play the G major pentatonic for the G chord, and even the F, and then back to A minor again. Um, and again, how that, that's happening as a musician, how that happens on your guitar, there's multitudes of ways to look at all the patterns moving and stuff. It's a lot of detective work. It really helps to match them with the chord shapes. Knowing your chord shapes helps you uh, tie together the patterns. If you look at, uh, if you follow the caged video, I have, uh, it shows you the five pentatonic boxes lining up with the five chords. Uh, that stuff all sits on top of itself. Uh, for years I thought chords and solos were in different places, but all of it and the arpeggios are all sitting right on top of themselves when you know how to look at it like that. Uh, another quick thought on the guitar here about the pentatonics. If we played the pentatonic scale on one string, so if we played A minor on one string or C major, You'll notice a pattern of steps, a, whole, uh, a big step and then two small steps, a big step. and a, When I say step, I mean spacing of the pentatonics like I talked about earlier. Um, you can play the whole pentatonic on one string. That's a great way on the thick string to help keep track of the start of each of the five shapes. Like the big one here, that's pattern one. Then that daisy chains to the small one, which is pattern two. That goes to the other small starting one of pattern three, usually the least often you see because it's just a little awkward for people. Uh, pattern four is the other big one, and then pattern five is the uh, a last small one again. If you take that a step further, if you placed a pentatonic on each single string, the same five notes, and you can look at it that way. If you keep track of the spacing, you can very comfortably move up and down a single string. The, the heady part is, if you do that for all six strings, you can also look at it the same way as the traditional patterns. It's the same notes in the same place. It's really cool how that works out. All right, let's take a little more advanced look at what some of the pentatonics can do. Uh, one of the first things that I see a lot is what I call the blues pentatonic. And I don't mean the blue note. Um, what I mean is the context in which you use this. So let's just say for a second, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna I have my loop pedal down here. I'm gonna loop a C major chord. So if I have a C major chord, I can play a C major pentatonic. Put my pinky on the C. All right, I'm in pattern two. And back to pattern one. Pattern one and two are so common, right? You really should know those a lot. But the blues pentatonic, 
is when you're faced with a major chord, again, this is a C major loop, and we play a C minor pentatonic. Not even adding a blue note, but just playing C minor over a C major chord, and there's the start of the blues. Right, that's really cool. So that means as a musician, this is true on any instrument, if you're faced with a major chord, you have kind of two avenues. I call them happy and bluesy. Um, major pentatonic, happy, matches the chord directly. The minor pentatonic has some fighting in there, right? The minor third and the major third are kind of button a little bit, but that's a good sound. Now, if you do that too much in a song, like playing the changes with a blues scale for every chord, ah, it can sound a little weird. Uh, people do it. Um, Stevie Ray did it on Couldn't Stand the Weather. He walks down a minor pentatonic over a B minor chord, then an A chord, and then a G chord, and then finally the F sharp chord. Um, but he has long enough to establish it as a sound that it works uh, okay. The other thing you can start doing with pentatonics is even more advanced, is using other, people think of them from other keys, or really in actuality, other modes. What? People have modes? Man, I thought this was a pentatonic thing. Uh, don't forget, a mode is a function of a scale, right? Any scale has as many modes as it does notes. In the pentatonic, we use two of the modes all the time, major and minor. But there is even another one that people use a lot, and that's based on the third note of the scale. People kind of use this uh, over like sus chords. So if I, um, if I have an A7 sus4 chord. Let me just loop it for a second. Right? Now a sus chord is neither major nor minor. Let's try the major for a second. A major. Yeah, okay. You know, here's the A on the pinky, that's pattern one. Now let's try it, we thought maybe if it was an A minor scale. So if we go to the fifth fret, first finger, pattern one, this is A minor over an A7 sus4 chord. not really liking that one either. So what people end up using is if you start on the third pattern. Ah. That creates a root, two, four, five, and flat seven. You get all the chord tones of the sus dominant chord. You could look at this as playing an E minor. Some people think I'm playing an E minor over the A7. Right, it's really cool. Uh, the other thing that people do a lot, um, jazz players do this kind of idea, uh, Frank Zappa even did this, is you can play it, if you're playing like a major seven chord, um, you can play over the third of the chord with a minor pentatonic or the seventh of the chord, you get some color tones. Um, so let's say if I played uh, a B flat major seven for a second. So its third is a D. Now if I use a minor pentatonic from the D, from the third of this major seventh chord, it doesn't even have a root, right? It's three, five, six, uh, seven, and uh, a nine with the third. People like George Benson would kind of do some of this stuff. Um, and then there's, you can even do from the major seven, uh, from the major seven. So in this case, an A minor arpeggio. It's a little trickier to use. Uh, 
Uh, Frank Zappa does this on like Outside Now. Uh, he plays um, uh, A minor over a B flat major seven chord like that. Once you know, you, it really helps to think the right stuff as a musician, because then you can get right to it. Once you know how it elicits sounds. So we talked about major and minor pentatonics. How the minor pentatonic can also act like a blues pentatonic when it's over a major chord. We talked about using pentatonics from other root notes, like the modes almost of a pentatonic. Uh, you can play the changes, right? Moving different pentatonics for different chords in different ways. Uh, here's another little fun thought. If you are in the key of C and you played the five notes of your C major, which is also A minor. Right, that goes with the one chord and the six minor chord. The, the one in the key of C, one major and six minors, the A. If you go to the next chord in the key of um, in the key of C, if you think of it as the four chord, that would be F major. So if I put my pinky up here on F, it puts my first finger on D. Now that's D minor. So D minor and F have this relationship, and they are also in the key of C, right? The F is the four chord, and the D is the two minor chord. If you go to the five chord, which is G, a G major pentatonic is also relatives with E minor. And that's the three and the five chord in the key. So between the three major chords, C, F, and G, they each get their own pentatonic. Their relatives are the three minor chords in the key, the D minor, the E minor, and the A minor. If you put all of those scales together and smush them together, you're only gonna come out with the seven note major scale. It's really incredible how, how closely related all of this information is. Um, so even if you see someone playing a major scale, they might have been thinking pentatonics per as the chords were changing and not thinking the scale at all. They might have been thinking just the arpeggios. Uh, you'll get the same result with just the arpeggios. You get all the notes again. It's a lot to think about and it's a really cool thing to know. This is the part of music I always refer to as it's, music's not a linear learning path. It's not like pentatonics done, modes done, arpeggios, okay, what's next? Whole tone scales, cool, diminished scales, augmented, diminished. You'll get too far down a place that you'll never play music at. You gotta know the basics really well. Know your triads, your chord inversions. Know your pentatonics and how to use them. Um, how to play them. That did, we didn't even talk about like different ways we sequence them or perform pentatonic scales. That's its own art and skill set as a musician and on the guitar uh, as well. But as a musician, you need to know your options, right? You need to know what scale to start, how to get into it quick, so you're not just running pattern one up and down the neck, trying to figure it out as you're playing to finally think you locked into one that sounds good. There's only 12 notes. There's only 12 of these rock and roll relationships. Right? That is a huge to understand what major and minor chords share the same house. They got the same chords living in there with the same names. Once you know that family, there's only 12 of these families. They're all in a cul-de-sac. They all have kind of cookie cutter houses. They all look the same. They just have different names on them. Once you know that language of music, man, you are in a great position. And guitar won't be nearly as mysterious uh, as you're playing it thinking that way. If you find yourself thinking a lot of what finger, what fret, and what string, that's gonna be a pretty tough way to play music. Um, you gotta think of any other craft in the world, you know your craft, right? If you're a painter, you don't just know what your bristles are like and what the color mix is like. You have to know how to look at something and capture light and shadow and depth, right? That doesn't come out with the colors. That's your brain understanding how to take uh, the visual arts and put it on a medium. Uh, whether you're in photography, whether you're a cook, it doesn't matter, you have to know your environment. Uh, you could never imagine a cook being like, I'm just gonna wing it today and try uh, 425 temperature and let me do two scoops of sugar and maybe three eggs today, let's see what happens. I mean, you can if you wanna just noodle around, but if you're trying to make food, you gotta understand the basic flow of how to cook, right? It's just like anything else. Knowing the right amount of theory will help you immensely. The guitar can help with this as you're trying to learn it as well if you know what to look for. All right, folks. Thank you so much. This was a long and deep lesson. I hope you really got a lot out of this. 
Um, again, my name is Souk, Lead Guitar Workshop. If you like what you hear, please hit the subscribe button notification. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff. Uh, you can check out our books on our website, LeadGuitarWorkshop.com, and um, check out for lessons too. We offer that as well. Rock on and keep playing, folks.